Hello, I'm Derek Remsberg. I'm the photo editor for the Daily Californian. And today I'm gonna teach you how to brew beer. So the first step is you have your grains and here they're crushed. The grains are where you get the alcohol from. It also adds body and it can add lots of flavor as well. So the first step is you take your grain and you put it in hot water. And the purpose for doing this is that there are enzymes that are in the grains and they break down the starches into simple sugars because the yeast cannot eat the, the long chains. They need to be as small as possible. And that just naturally occurs. The enzymes are already present in, in the grain. You don't have to add anything. So I'm gonna leave it here in this pot for about an hour and I'm gonna cover it up so it doesn't lose any heat and hopefully it will stay pretty constant over that time frame. So after an hour, you can take the grains out and from this point they really aren't any use at all. Uh, some people actually reuse their grains. They make cookies or they make bread. Some people make dog treats out of them. But there are lots of different things you could do with it. But once those are taken out, you bring it to a boil. And once it's boiling, you are gonna add hops. They come in different, two different forms. You can see there's pellet hops and actual flower hops. Hops add lots of different things to the beer. They add the bitterness, which is one of the most important parts, but they also add flavor and aroma. As an example, an IPA or an India Pale Ale is a beer where it's pretty much a showcase for hops, and that's actually what I am brewing today. It's gonna to be a wheat IPA. The hops are added at various stages in the boil. The first time I add the hops, it boils for 60 minutes, and those are for bitterness. The hops that I add during the middle are mostly for flavor, and the ones at the very end are for aroma. The wort is basically the mixture that is here. It's unfermented beer, so it's the water with all the sugars in it and the hops but it doesn't have any alcohol now and you need to cool that down to around room temperature before you add the yeast so I have this tool here that I made it's called a wart chiller and I hook it up to my sink and run cold water through it so it picks up all the heat from the wart and just transfers it out and I'll keep that running until the wart is at around 75 degrees. After cooling, I transfer my wort into a carboy. This one's six and a half gallons, and it's where I'm gonna ferment the beer. It's gonna be in here for about two to three weeks, depending on how active the yeast is. It's now that the beer has finished transferring, I can add the yeast. There are dozens, maybe even hundreds of different strains of yeast, and they all have very different characteristics. What temperatures they like to ferment at, what type of flavors they produce. This one here is American Ale. It's used in lots of American beers. After I pour in the yeast, I put on the airlock, and the airlock allows CO2 to escape while not letting anything into the beer. And that's important because the yeast is eating all of the sugar and CO2 is produced as a byproduct, so it needs somewhere to go. Otherwise, the carboy might explode, which will just produce a huge mess. So this entire process will take between maybe five and six hours. Uh, a lot of it is just time spent waiting around, waiting for water to heat up, waiting for it to cool down. But as you can see, the steps really aren't that complex. Cheers.